Hey guys, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So today we are doing a transformation cut as well as a partial alopecia weaving service on my client here. So we did not do a relaxer today. Um, we just went ahead and went straight into the wash and into her haircut. For her shampoo, we used our Elite Hair Repair and Growth Shampoo and Conditioner. And now we're going through and just preparing her for the mold um, and also the style. So of course I started off in the sides and the back, which were already somewhat short. I just cleaned them up slightly. And then I went ahead into her crown area where the hair was a little bit longer and just started to blend that a little bit more. Now, for you guys that are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please don't forget to turn on your notifications so you know when I am posting. And also I'll be having an alopecia advanced cutting class where I'll be teaching techniques such as this webinar based or uh, virtually. So you'll have information about that to sign up for my stylists and barbers out there who are interested in getting into this aspect of advanced cutting. Um, outside of that, you guys, what I'm doing right now is I'm just basically going around the perimeter of where she has um, her thinning or balding and just creating um, my silhouette of the actual haircut. Now, when you have clients who have situations such as this, every single cut is gonna be a custom cut. And you always wanna just make sure that you are doing your absolute best to cater to that. You can't use your standard cutting um, map where you know we go from here to here and then you do this and you do, everything is going to be custom, you guys. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing these types of cuts. And that's another reason why I am doing that type of class because I wanna teach you guys how to handle clients of this nature. Now, outside of the haircut, for my client here, she's actually been coming to me for quite some time. As you guys can tell, that area where there is no hair, it is very shiny, it looks very smooth. That means, um, typically, that that area is scarred. So whenever you guys hear me say scarring, that's exactly what I mean when I say scarring, where it looks nice and smooth, it looks very shiny, you don't see a follicle there, or you may even have one or two in that area, that is still scarring, you guys. And typically when it's scarred, that hair does not return. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting her molded down. I'm using our Elite Silk Wrap Foam to mold her. Now the mold, of course, is extremely important. You want to make sure that your foundation is nice and smooth, especially for clients where you are dealing with situations such as thinning or balding. And what I'm doing now is preparing her um, for the actual style itself. So I'm just going around and I'm laying that hair down nice and smooth. You want to lay the hair in the direction that you are going to style it or actually cut it. That also is included in that as well. Now for her sides and her front, she does have um, alop or traction alopecia on her hairline, especially in the front area where you guys saw me when I was cutting. So you wanna make sure that you mask that at this point during the process when you're doing your mold. If you guys notice, I swoop the hair over and it looks as though there's nothing going on in that area. That is exactly how you want it. I also am one of those people where I do not like lines in my mold unless requested. So for her, of course, I made sure that I blended it really well and I did not leave any sort of lines and I gave her just a little bit of design on the sideburns, a little bit of accent. Uh, it's not required, but of course you still wanna give them a beautiful style to mimic the fact like no one knows that something is going on. Now for her top area where you see the weaving area that I'm gonna be doing, um, that is gonna also be a part of my alopecia weaving class for those of you that want to learn how to mask a client's hair um, through weaving techniques or alternative weaving techniques for clients that cannot regrow their hair. That'll also be taught in one of my other classes. Now, where you see me putting a little bit of hair gel in the nape there, that is where the hair likes to flip up right under the occipital bone. Adding a little bit of gel and then putting some foam over it will keep it nice and flat, but it will also keep it from getting hard when you add the foam at the end. So that's why I put a little bit of foam on there. And then of course you add your wrap strips, tie it nice and snug. And then for the base of the neck, I didn't wanna put that big wrap strip. So what I did was just go ahead and cut it to the size that I needed, which is um, more than fine because I want her hair to dry um, quickly, evenly, and I didn't wanna have her under the dryer for, for way too long. So I made sure to cut that strip to match the area and then I just cut the little clips off. So she'll go into the dryer, dry thoroughly. Um, I did add the protectant over the thinning or balding area there. And then we're gonna do our weave. <laughs> 
I like that transition. I, would, I just wanted you guys to see that I, I can TikTok it too. <laughs> but yes, I installed her extensions in that area. So like I said, you guys, you'll be able to register soon for my alopecia weaving class. And you'll be able to learn those techniques as well as the alopecia cutting class, which is the advanced cutting. You'll be able to learn that at the same time. So what I'm doing now is just kind of thinning down um, the nape of her neck slightly and just edging her out. Some people like to give the hard edge. Some people like to leave it nice and fray. I like a neat cut. I'm, I'm like a neat freak. I don't like to see the hairs wisping too much. I, I just don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that trend. Okay. So I like that. I like to look like I have an edge on the back of my head. So I also do that for my clients that request it. It's a request. So we are actually going to be doing, um, I'm not going to say a 90s style because it's not a 90s style, but now everything is about soft hair, curls, that kind of thing. Like she gave me a picture of a cut that kind of mimics the style that I have. So I was right at home with this particular style where she wanted the top flipped and spiked and that kind of thing. I mean, guys, to be quite honest, even the way it is right now, she could have wore this the way it was as just a mold and just kind of flipped it up the way it is now. And she would have been on her way out. But of course, that's not what she wanted. So I'm just going through and curling her um, and just kind of blending everything in. And you guys will be able to see, you know, the finished style towards the end. And then I know you guys are going to ask what iron I'm using. This is a H2 Pro Micro. Um, I think you can get it on Amazon. You can also get it through the company that makes it themselves. I want to say this one is the it, I'm not going to say want to say this is the three tenths of an inch. So it's the smallest one that is made thus far that I know of as a flat iron. So for her crown area, I'm basically starting by curling and then I'll be flipping it and you'll get to see that um, outcome very shortly. So let's talk about care for this style. So when she goes home, um, it's really a almost carefree style. She'll basically put her scarf for me, honestly, I, well, honestly, I like to use cotton, like a bandana um, around the sides and back of my head because I feel like the satin and the silk, they slide around too much for me and it disturbs the mold. So for me, I like that dry cotton, um, especially for those of us who perspire a lot and you have a shortcut like me. Putting satin and polyester and all that stuff, it just makes me sweat even more, but it's really by choice. And then other than that, she won't have to do anything to the top. Um, meaning her crown area where it's flipped up um, because she actually wanted me to make it really crispy or hard is the better word. So I did spray her with a hard spritz, a hard hold spritz so that it would stay and she doesn't have to mess with it. Now, of course, this style, she could have been curled with some curls if she wanted it. It could have been so many different things. Um, the good thing is you have to make sure or the key to it is that you have to make sure that that extension that you put in it blends with her hair and as you guys can tell it blends really nicely you don't even see her bald spot at all that area has been fully protected with at least two layers of protection um there's more layers that you can put on but for a style of this nature you don't want to put too much and then of course from there she's able to go on about her day now as i was saying you guys that area is scarred so there is actually no growth there um, and it's been that way since I've started doing her hair. The hair that was growing in has grown around it and then whatever's in that spot has not grown in. So we definitely know that area is scarred and it is what it is. So for, you know, some people be like, oh, but you're putting weave right there and that's not gonna help. Well, nothing is gonna help at this point. And it's time to really take back your confidence and take back your, your feel good, you know, your self-esteem. So if that's what my client wants, that's what my client is gonna get to the best of my ability also to the healthiest form that I can offer it. So now what I'm doing is just going through and flipping uh, her crown area. And I mean, there's really not much for me to say at this point other than you guys don't forget to thumbs up and comment and tell me what you thought about the style. Tell me what you thought about the blend because you don't even see that there's an actual piece of hair in there at all. And it's a, it's a nice sized area that I had to cover with the extensions. And with that weaving method that I use. So it's like, could you tell that she even had a problem? Comment and tell me if you can tell that she had a problem other than knowing or seeing that I showed you a problem. Because you can't. That's the object to the game. You want to deceive the eye, but you want to also give your client that confidence and that love that they need oh so much. 
So I think her style came out absolutely amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget, like I said, to subscribe to my channel. You've stumbled upon the craziest person on the planet and the most unpolitically correct hairstylist you'll ever meet. Um, and then of course to shop our hair care products, hair care growth and retention products, go to EliteHairCareUSA.com and that is where you'll be able to get our frizz tamer, our wrap foam that we used on her, all of that. And then information will be available soon for you guys to be able to register for our alopecia weaving class and our alopecia advanced cutting class. But like I said, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And for those of you wondering what that is that I'm doing, I'm using a diffuser to really freeze the hair in place after I sprayed the spritz on her hair. And yes, we use spritz. Um, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> she wanted it to stay in place. I do it to myself all the time, but I have a healthy head of hair, so we're good. All right, you guys, see you in the next video, but keep watching to the end.